Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Fast to my good evening, it's half past five. This is update for Friday, 26th of May, 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes to look at the latest news here on the Isle of Man. A background to that news and sport and business and sea watch and travel updates and the newsmakers in person this evening. Road racing is back. Starting this evening at Belown, early years training centre, I'll Learn has closed, making university financial support easier. The Manx football season wraps up tomorrow at the Bowl and all the TT road closures and changes. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Fastamai, Christian Jones. Fastamai. The island's only private learning centre for early years practitioners, teaching assistants and workers in the adult and social care sectors has announced it's permanently closing. Our Learn says it's down to financial difficulties, but insists they've explored every avenue before making the decision. The family of a man murdered in Castletown in 2013 say they hope the matter can finally be put to rest. At Douglas Courthouse yesterday, relatives of Neil Edward Roberts watched as his killer Ian Anthony Anderson was handed a life sentence. And following criticism that the government's application process for students applying for financial help was too difficult to follow, an overhaul has been carried out. The Department of Education hoped the improvements will make it easier to apply for student university loans. In international news, the mum and dad of a 10-month-old who was murdered in Chesterfield have been handed a combined minimum sentence of 56 years in prison. Finley Bowden died on Christmas Day 2020 after sustaining more than 130 separate injuries. A union representing civil service workers has paused strike action after being offered talks with the UK government. Members of Prospect, including those at the Met Office and Natural England, were due to walk out next month over pay. And Celine Dion has cancelled the remaining 42 dates of a world tour she was planning after suffering muscle spasms. The singer is being treated for a syndrome that's left her unable to perform. Manx Radio News, those are the update news headlines next at six. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face to face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Jeremiah, thank you, Christian. From the Ronaldsway Met Office, there's no wind warning in operation for the North Irish Sea. State of Sea is smooth or slight. And the bank holiday weekend weather this evening, fine, dry and sunny. Then dry after dark. Overnight minimum temperature is 10 degrees. For Jasan, tomorrow, Saturday, dry with variable cloud. A light breeze, which will pick up from the north during the evening, up to 19 Celsius tomorrow, down to 9 through the night, into Jaduni. Sunday, dry, sunny, daylight maximum 17, and the same for Bank Holiday Monday. The tide turned about half an hour ago. High waters at 6 minutes past 5. Sunset tonight, 28 minutes before 10. The late low tide, 3 minutes to 11. Sunrise, 2 minutes to 5 tomorrow morning. High water, 10 past 5. And the lunchtime low water, 2 minutes after midday. The Manx Glass and Glazing Showroom will be closed for TT from the 2nd of June. Reopening on Monday the 12th of June. It's back. Road racing on the Isle of Man for 2023 officially gets underway tonight with the start of the pre-TT Classic Road Races on the course at Belown. Roads around the Southern Circuit close at 6 o'clock tonight, reopen at 20 to 10. There are 318 entries for this year's event. Phil Edge is the race's promoter, the Southern 100 Club. Certainly on par with pre-COVID and not far off, I think, the uh, sort of record is about 320-something. It's certainly an excellent, excellent entry. It's not not only the older riders now, there's lots of the youngsters taking up classic racing, whether it's for the soldier's sake or whether it's, I can't see it being any cheaper than the modern machines because they take a little bit more TLC. But it's encouraging that the younger riders also want to ride them as well as the, the boys who are having their second childhood. Seeing the enthusiasm from the next generation of those, how encouraging is that? Oh, very much so. Of course, a lot of the bikes that some of the present day racers were brought up with, they are now starting to become eligible for classic 
classic racing. So it won't be long before they'll be making an appearance on the Milan course at the classics. It's encouraging all the way through. There'll be a lot of interest in these classic machines, how they operate, how they're built, but purely from a spectator's perspective, seeing these machines whizzing round the Milan course, what kind of a spectacle is that for someone maybe who's never seen it before? Taking the opposite end first, nostalgic wise, there are not that many Nortons around these days and the AGSs and matchlesses, we've got the Sealies, which are all 60s era, so a lot of people remember that. I think it's also the closeness of the racing with the competitors. The um, rivalry is still there, no matter what their ages are, and they might be a little bit infirm when you see them walking around the paddock, but once they've got the leg over that bike, age is forgotten and away they go. The camaraderie is there, the, the sights and the sounds with the uh, classic bikes, that's the, uh, the other attraction. The closure of Isle Learn announced today as a devastating blow to the island's childcare sector, so says Gary Pierce, the owner of the Hopes and Dreams Childcare Group. Gary says the loss of the island's only private learning centre for early years practitioners, teaching assistants and workers in the adult and social care centres will leave a void. Isle Learn were instrumental when UCM shifted its focus away from the sector and for people working within the sector, I'll learn were the only or one of the main routes to getting qualifications, which are both required by registration and inspections in terms of operating in the regulatory environment, but also in terms of providing career progression and making it an attractive proposition for people to move into a career caring and educating our young children. So they're a fundamental role that they've they've played over the last eight years. And, uh, and as I say, it's devastating news. We're talking teaching assistants and workers in the adult and social care sectors as well. In all of those areas, do you think there will need to be a renewed focus now and exploring other options because those qualifications, of course, are necessary? I can't help but think the same devastation will be felt within the other sectors you mentioned. The island is in desperate need of the services of social workers, teachers, nurses, support workers within those sectors, as much as it is within the childcare sector. And our young people, and in fact, the whole island population, (laughs) needs the support of these type of skilled workers. If we're going to hit any of the goals and objectives of of the childcare strategy, but more widely of the Ireland plan, it would appear the government have really a challenge in trying to fill the void that Isle Learn will leave. This is the most listened to Isle of Man news source. And Manx Radio's update is the Isle of Man's most downloaded news podcast. The Department of Education, Sport and Culture is aiming to make it easier for university students to apply for financial help. A new application system has been created after previous users said the process was difficult to follow. The new system fell under the scrutiny of a public accounts committee yesterday. Graham Kinraid, Joanne Roberts and Glenn Shimmin from the DESC answered a range of questions including how children in care are supported into high education. Can you give us any indication how many children in care have gone to start higher education and completed, graduated. I think I will get that information for you, but I believe it's in single figures over the last 10 years. Over the last, I know, certainly over the last couple of years, it's in single figures. We could get you the data over the last 10 years, but I don't have it with me. Just can I just currently add on that, uh, an amendment to the regulations which we're looking at um, for, to, to come in for September 2023 would be to um, look at writing off the looked after children's loan amount so that actually on completion we would, we would write that off. I think that's sort of um, sending the cart way after the horse on that one because they have to be able to get in through the door in the first place and you're talking about the other end of the system rather than actually making it any way easier to get in through the door of higher education in the first place and, and I think that's worth exploring a little further just in terms of we've identified that looked after children are far less likely to go in but what you're saying is the system doesn't flex doesn't have any other mechanisms that will make it easier and has the department done any assessment in that at all uh, as to what barriers might help to be removed for that group in order to access higher education the evidence would say the, the main barrier there is qualification it's being able to achieve the qualification to be able to get through that first doorway you, you said that you guessed that it was the UCAS points or the, the, in terms of the, 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 the main barrier again do you have any evidence to sort of support 
that? Or would you have evidence available to support that if you actually looked at it? Uh, we, we monitor, looked after children very carefully, yes. OK, but it hasn't led to any policy solutions. OK. The curtain comes down on the Manx football season tomorrow with a Paul Henry Gold Cup final being held at the Bowl 2 o'clock tomorrow. As some areas face Braddon with both sides having finished first and second in Division 2 this season. Uh, Max Radio's football correspondent Tony Mepham gives us his thoughts on the game tomorrow. I think it can be close because, as I've said right the way throughout the season, Rob, that Braddon have improved because they're a young team, so they're going to get better, get used to playing with senior players, get used to playing against senior players because it's a team that Will Smith and the rest of the coaches at Braddon have sort of had at a very young age, you know, 12 years of age maybe. A lot of them have turned 16 last year and this year, and that's why they've been so strong. But uh, St Mary's have got some good experienced players in there, informed players as well, when you look at uh, Owen Canaper, the way he's been scoring of late. I watched them recently and they were strong. They looked good all round the whole team. So Braddon are going to have a, a tough game on their hands here to try and take this trophy away from St Mary's. Particularly with the, the cup final for these two sides, yes, they'll have maybe even half an eye on the next campaign up in the Canada Life Men's Premier League next season. But to go into the next Premier League campaign in a few months' time with some silverware under their belt, whichever side ends up winning this, how much could that do for them psychologically? Oh, huge, because uh, they'll be hoping as well, Rob, to try and maybe pick up uh, one or two players because it's that university thing isn't it when we, you've got young players 16, 17 some will be 18 they might lose them to uh, university but it's always nice to win silverware and that's something that I've noticed over the last couple of weeks with so many cup finals you know people keep saying oh you know Manx football's dipping and stuff like that you say that to the teams that are in the final the two teams win or lose some of the crowds that we've had this year have been absolutely fantastic and I expect a large crowd on Saturday as well because you know St Mary's have a great following and Braddon have you know a lot of good players who've played there in the past that always seem to turn up when they're playing in a final great setting in the bowl large crowd and it just finishes off a really good football season Sea Watch with the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company. Mothership Ben McCree departed Hesham at 20 to 3. She'll be into Douglas in the next half hour or so. On to the Lynx Band departing this evening at 7.45, arriving in the Hesham at half past 11, departing at 02.15, back to Douglas at 6 tomorrow morning. High speed craft Manannan left Douglas a minute after 3. She'll be into Liverpool in the next five minutes or so. Onto the link span by the pier head, leaving this evening at 7.45, back to Douglas at half past 10 tonight. And tomorrow morning's departure, 7.30, Manannan heads to Liverpool, 8.45, Ben McGree to Hesham. Follow the Steam Packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information. Road closures and changes are already coming into force ahead of the 2023 TT races starting, of course, on Monday. Rob Pritchard's all the details. After work was carried out earlier today, the mountain road is now one way from Ramsey Hairpin to the Cregna Bar, and that system will remain in place until Tuesday the 13th of June. Cycling is now also prohibited on that section of the mountain road until 9.30am on Friday the 26th of June, and people are warned anyone found cycling on the route during the restriction period could face arrest. Turning to the start of TT 2023 on Monday the 29th of May. On that day the Mountain Road will begin closing at 8.45am from Barul Park in Ramsey whilst the whole of the TT course will be closed from 10am and then reopen no later than 9.30pm. Practice sessions being held on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday next week will then be held in the evenings. On those three days the Mountain Course will be closed from 6pm until no later than 9.30pm. Elsewhere on the final practice day on Friday the 2nd of June. Closures around the course will be during the day, with highways cordoned off from 12.30pm until 4.30pm at the latest. There is also a contingency practice slot on the Friday if required. Should that need to be used, the course will be shut from 6pm until no later than 9.30pm. For details of all of the road closures during the TT fortnight for both practice and race week, you can visit our dedicated Manx Radio TT website at motorsports.manxradio.com Manx Radio Business Briefing. At 6 minutes before six. Asda in the UK is said to announce a £10 billion merger with the sister business EG Group, Eurogarages Group. It was reported today. It's understood Asda will pay about £3 billion for EG, which will be partially funded through half a billion pounds worth of debt provided by the American firm Apollo Global Management. And for a full daily market report, go to RamseyCrookall.com. Elon Musk's brain chip firm says it's got approval from the US Food and Drugs Administration to 
conduct its first tests on humans. The Neuralink implant company aims to restore vision and mobility to people by linking their brains to computers. The FDA acknowledged Neuralink's announcement, although Neuralink says it doesn't have immediate plans to start recruiting participants, and it has to be said Mr. Musk's previous ambitions to begin tests came to nothing. An earlier bid by Neuralink to get FDA approval was rejected. Neuralink wants to use its microchips to treat conditions like paralysis and blindness and help people with disabilities to use computers and mobile technology. The brain chips, which have been tested on monkeys, are designed to interpret signals produced in the brain and relay information to devices via Bluetooth. The Stock Market Report. Brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European stock markets rebounded. The dollar paired losses. Oil ticked up and gold prices moved slightly higher. The numbers now from Ramsey Crookall at the close in London. The FTSE 100 was up three quarters of a percent at 7,627. The DAX in Frankfurt up just over one and two tenths percent at 15,984. Short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial up eight tenths of a percent at 33,026. The Nasdaq Tech Stocks Index up one and seven tenths percent at twelve thousand nine hundred and fifteen, and in Chicago, in the Midwest, the S and P five hundred up almost a percent at four thousand one hundred and ninety-two. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling trading at uh, one U.S. dollar twenty-three point three cents, one euro fifteen point one cents, and twenty-four South African rand twenty point two cents. In commodities, gold's ticked up uh, just over a tenth of a percent currently, one thousand nine hundred and forty-three dollars per troy ounce. And a barrel of Brent crude up eight tenths of a percent at the moment, $76.70. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house or the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. Isle of Man Water Sports. Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Here's the relevant information if you're sailing, kayaking, windsurfing, paddleboarding, sea swimming, diving or surfing this weekend. Sea temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. For Saturday, the wind's variable, force 3 or less, increasing north or northwesterly, force five, 4 or 5 tomorrow evening. Wave height, 0.1 to 0.3 metres and then 0.5 to 1 metre. Wave period, 2 to 3 seconds. High tides, 5.10 a.m., 6.15 p.m. And on Sunday, the wind is north-northwesterly, force 4 or 5, veering easterly late evening. Wave period is 2 to 3 seconds. Wave height, 0.5 to 1 metre. And the high tides, 6.15 a.m., 7.25 p.m. Manx Glass and Glazing can produce bespoke splashbacks for your kitchen in any colours. Speak to the team on 674 573. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. The family of a man murdered in Castletown in 2013, so they hope the matter can finally be put to rest. At Douglas Courthouse yesterday, Neil Edward Roberts Killer was jailed for life. Former Castletown resident Ian Anthony Anderson was told he'll serve a minimum of 15 years. It follows a retrial which saw a jury convict him of murder for a second time. Detective Chief Inspector Mark Newey was the senior investigating officer on the case. Going yeah, through it all again and reliving those emotions I've had. Um Mr Anderson being found guilty initially, thinking that the matter was dealt with and they could move on with their life and, and mourn the loss, it brings it all to the fore again and, you know, ever since the, the appeal was, um, the conviction, sorry, was quashed in the UK, they've just been on tender hooks waiting for, for today and are now obviously sentenced. This must be a massive undertaking from both the police work 10 years ago, but also the, the prosecutors and the, the legal support that the, this case has needed. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's, it's always a, a strange one with a retrial because you don't know sort of necessarily what's going to happen or, or what's going to be brought up. But uh, some really good work has been done by um, Mr Kane of the Attorney General's Chambers and Detective Constable Ali Parker, um, who's been in touch with the family and led them through each step of the way. Do you hope, do you think that there is any sentence, that there's any verdict that can actually 
provide that level of closure that this family is obviously looking for? I really don't think there is, no. Um, hopefully now there is the closure for them and they can move on with their life. But no matter what the Deemster um, would, would have issued today, it can't bring Neil back. Manx Radio Sport. Here's our sports editor, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I. Good evening. Starting with boxing and Jay Burden and TJ Fair will find out this evening who they'll face in the opening round of the Eindhoven Box Cup in the Netherlands. For the two Manx fighters, it's the last pro outing of their current campaigns. Fair will head into the competition off a third round TKO against Jack Cullen in Liverpool last weekend, whilst Burden's fight at the same event was called off as her opponent withdrew due to injury. Whilst it'll be Fair's first outing at this type of event, Burden heads into the women's competition with experience, having picked up a bronze medal in her weight class at the Algarve Box Cup in Portugal in December last year. The official draw is due to be held between 9pm and 10pm local time or 8pm to 9pm UK time. Turning now to motorsport and a local TT competitor has put out an appeal for help over a potential last minute change in machinery for this year's races. Manxman Jamie Kringle has taken to social media to say following discussions with his team there's a high chance his ride for these superbike and super stock classes won't be ready in time. As a result he's on the lookout for an alternative machine that could be competitive in the 1000cc classes. Now in his second year on the Snaefell Mountain course along with the big bikes Kringle is also planning to race in the super sport and super Super twin categories. And finally, he may have plenty of work ahead to get ready for the TT races, but 23-time winner John McGuinness made the day for some of his fans earlier today. The Morecambe Missile took time out of his busy schedule to meet with numerous patients receiving end-of-life care at Hospice Isle of Man. McGuinness, who made an historic 100th TT race start last year, will be the sole rider for Honda Racing UK on the mountain course in 2023, after his teammate Nathan Harrison officially withdrew early this week due to injury. <laughs> Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the 6 o'clock EasyJet from Bristol is delayed until 10 to 7, then it's EasyJet uh, 20 past 7 inbound from Liverpool, that's showing on time. The 10 to 8 Logan Air from London City on time, the returning patient transfer Logan Air from Liverpool on time at 5 to 8 and the EasyJet inbound from Gatwick at half past 8 showing on time. Outbound EasyJet 6 o'clock to Manchester out on time then it's uh, the Logan Air to Liverpool the patient transfer plane showing on time 6.30 EasyJet to Bristol is delayed till 20 past 7 outbound then it's the 10 to 8 EasyJet to Liverpool the 9 o'clock to London Gatwick showing on time on the roads, of course, you've got uh, the Belown Circuit in action tonight. The roads are closed from 5 past 6 until 20 to 10. Tomorrow at Belown, midday 30 till 4.30 and 6 till 9. And on Sunday from 1 through till 6. Cycling is prohibited on the mountain throughout the TT period. In Groudal, Groudal roads closed in Onken between Church Road and Fairway Close for gas work and Port Aaron still got some delays on that four-way traffic signal at Balafesson Road for the new pedestrian crossing. In Solby, temporary lights on the Solby Strait for resurfacing and the Balamina Road in Jerby's got face closures for water main replacement. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Spread your payments interest-free. Get more with Keyside Update brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690-300. New Ramsey Commissioners Chair Albie Oldham and Vice Chair Rob Cowell says there's a lot of problems in Ramsey that need sorting out, including development of brownfield sites and regeneration of the key. Our local democracy reporter Emma Draper's been talking to them. Gives me a chance to finish off what I started two years ago. I got halfway through, but I did a short spell last time uh, because of the COVID. This time we've got a really good team together. There's a lot There's a going lot. on within Ramsey. Yeah. We have the Keyside Redevelopment, which is on, on the back burner within central government. Uh, hopefully funding for that will come through at some point. Um, we have the street needs redevelopment still. There's a lot of brownfield sites in the town that we need to see developed. DFE ran a uh, project recently with brownfield funding being available to central government, and that was great. I want to see the uptake on that and see what's actually happened as the uh, the results will come through in the next year or two I would hope there's a lot of projects you know net zero as well within the town hall being probably our biggest driver for the next 12 months I think the biggest thing for Ramsey resident is value for money 
the right player wants to see value and that's what we're committed to bring. I agree with that. There's things in town that need doing. We haven't got coffers in a pot for everything, but we can only try. It's uh, the courthouse that's taken us a few years to get going uh, and that's building up now. We've got people coming in and out of there. Historically, Ramsey, or any, any local authority has outstanding debt on rate debt. So we have got a small amount of debtors in Ramsey uh, and we've now finally got Treasury sign-off to go and actively pursue that debt through our own means. So Ramstown Commissioners is, is committed to bringing that money that's outstanding into our pot so we can benefit the town. You know, the majority of people, 99.8% probably, are good-going citizens and pay their rates on time, but there's a percentage, a very small one. But it's still money that we need to bring in, um, which can fund projects going forward to make it a better place. That's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's News Department. Thanks to newsreader Christian Jones, producer Rhian Evans. After the news at 6 o'clock, Big Tom's here, Tom Kane with the greatest hits, Sweet and Swing with Howie Kane at 9, and After Hours, The Late Show with Rhian at 10. Have a great bank holiday weekend, back on Tuesday. W. I.